Today I'm going to be showing you how to run PlayStation 2 games using an emulator on Apple Silicon Mac. So this is going to work on the M1, M2 or M3 chips or any future M4 chip, M5 chip of the future. Unfortunately, it's not going to work on Intel chips, but this is a pretty damn good emulator for Apple Silicon Macs. So we're going to be using Ether SX2. What I'm going to do is to show you how to fully set up this emulator, how to download, how to install, how to set up the BIOSes, how to get a controller paired up so you can play this using a DualSense controller or any other Bluetooth controller. We're also going to look at in-game graphics settings and how to change all of those and get games like Final Fantasy X and God of War 2 and Shadow of the Colossus working as well as possible on the Apple Silicon Mac. So what we're going to do is leave a link in the description for the etherSX2.com website and what we can do is navigate down until we find the desktop folder here and then we're going to find etherSX2 for ARM desktops. We're going to scroll down until we find the Mac folder and here what we're going to do is scroll down and we're going to find the latest version of etherSX2 which at the time recording is 1.53939-Mac. So click on this and then click allow and that's going to download into our downloads folder. Then we're going to go to our finder, go to our downloads folder, and then we're going to find the EtherSX2 zip file. So double click on this to extract. And then we have the EtherSX2 application here, which we're going to drag and drop into the applications folder. Drag and drop, and then let go here. So that's basically now installed into the applications folder. We're going to go ahead and double click to launch the application. Here it's saying it can't be opened. And what we're going to do is press OK. We're going to hold down the control key and then click on EtherSX2 and then press the open button and then we have the option to manually open this, press open, and now the application has opened up. What we need to do now is to go ahead and install the BIOS. So we're going to go and click on here and then go to etherSX2 in the menu bar and then go to preferences. And then we need to go ahead and go and locate our BIOS folder. So basically we need to put a BIOS file into this folder here, which you can navigate to by clicking on open in Explorer. And then this is going to open up the application support folder where the BIOS needs to be located. So I'm not going to be able to link to the BIOS directly, but I'm going to paste my BIOS files here that you should be able to extract them from a jailbroken PS2. The main file that you probably need is this one called scph39001.bin. You could probably find this online quite easily as well. As long as this one is within the BIOS folder, then you're probably going to be covered. Once that's all ready, we can go ahead back into etherSX2 settings. We can click on refresh list. You can see here, this is the US version of the PlayStation 2 BIOS. That's probably all that we actually need. Next, we're going to need actual games listed here. So you need to either have your original PlayStation 2 games ripped into the bin or ISO format or one of these file formats here. Or you can also download these quite easily from the internet. Just type in the word PS2 ISO and then also the name of the game and you'll be able to find plenty of other people's backups which you can download. So here I'm going to press add game directory. I'm going to add my game directory for all of my PlayStation 2 files. So I'm going to select my PS2 folder here, press open. Here it's asking us, do we want to scan record? Recursively, press yes. And now all of my games have appeared here. So these are all available to have a play with now. Here we're ready to load up any of these games. So the last thing we need to do is configure our controller. So under the Mac settings, I have enter Bluetooth. So this is a PlayStation 5 DualSense controller. Each controller is going to be pairing slightly differently on a Mac. However, to put this in the pairing mode, we just hold down this button here and then hold down the home button until this starts to flash. So you can see the LED here has started to flash here. And then on the Mac side, you can see here, there is a DualSense wireless controller appearing under nearby devices. Press the connect button. And this is now connected up. You can see here that the DualSense LED has turned a solid blue light. So that means it's all paired up and ready to go. Just go to settings and then controllers. Click on here. So under controllers, we have the PS5 controller detected. And what we want to do is to basically rebind all of these keys. Because right now these are set to keyboard. You can press on automatic mapping. And then we can click on the PS5 controller here. And then that's going to go ahead and remap all of the PS5 controls with DualShock 2 controls instead. And now we're going to configure some graphic settings too. So you can do this on a global level from the menu bar. So you can change all of the graphic settings here. So for example, most of the games I want to play are going to be in widescreen 61 on aspect ratio. So that's something that I don't mind doing on a global basis. However, you might want to tweak the individual games as well. So you can right click on a specific game, for example, Shadow of the Colossus, go to properties, and then we can change the individual settings here. So for example, I'm going to change the rendering mode here. I will tweak the internal resolution so that it's three times so that it gets up to 1080p, which is my recording resolution. We can also do other fixes here, which aren't going to affect other games. And we can also do things like add sharpening, like full screen anti-aliasing, etc. However, I'm just going to leave mine as it is for now. Here we're going to press close. So now I'm going to load up a game by double clicking on 
the title here. And here we're going to do is to full screen this game so we can see it more clearly. And we're going to play the game with our controller now. So generally this is a good idea in game to turn on progressive scan and turn on widescreen aspect ratios. This is going to make games like Shadow of the Colossus work as well as possible on Ethereum X2 on a Mac. So you can see pretty good performance on the M3s which is pretty damn good considering this is a pretty hard game to emulate. Here is the game God of War 2. So we're running this with all of the widescreen hacks and it looks pretty damn good considering that this is the base M3 chip. And also other classic RPGs, for example, Final Fantasy X also work really well through Ethereum X2 on the Mac. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.